The banners have been called. And the ice dragon is ready to be unleashed. The dire wolves are on the hunt. And the wine has been poured. This is SA Live's Show of Thrones. <laughs> Good afternoon. And good afternoon, everyone. It is a fiery Friday here at Market Square. We've got a lot going on as we celebrate the Game of Thrones. I am the Night King. I feel like I have to do that. My coaster hitch. <laughs> I don't know if the Night King would do that move. But... You have to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in and, costume. I have to. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. <laughs> First of my name, Mother of Dragons. Um, some of us have loved, of course, the show from the beginning, and others are just now falling under its spell. But you know what? Yeah, like you. Yeah. But we are all fans of the popular uh, HBO show Game of Thrones. So before the big finale this Sunday, we're paying tribute and helping you prepare for the end. Now, for those of you that you know don't watch or haven't watched um it's all about power different factions are you know kind of fighting for the throne there's going to be one person to kind of succeed in the end okay. and you know we're going to find out who the winner is this coming sunday I night like i should take notes right now as you're well, explaining this you know, yeah i know i know so uh just 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 a heads up if you haven't watched the show up to this point there are spoilers ahead there are no spoilers for the actual final episode, but just up to this point. So I, I should, you might have to cover your yeah, ears. Yeah, okay, cover my ears, blah, 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 blah. But, blah, I mean, blah, some, blah, some, blah. Of, some of the favorite yeah. moments, you know, kind of on the show, um, just kind of looking back, uh, when Hodor holds the door, uh, that's one of mine. Uh, okay. When Jon Snow meets the Night King. Okay. I like the puppies when they found them. Oh, the, pu the dire yeah, wolf? The dire wolf puppies, they <laughs> yes. were adorable. Yes, because you're in season one, right? I'm, yes, I'm yes. like episode five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when Daenerys gets her army of the Unsullied, she kind of sets them free, but they still choose to fight for her. Uh, when King Joffrey dies, as well, we all know why. And, of course, when Arya kills the Night King. And then there are... The, the speculations on what's going to be going on is, uh, you know, some of the most hotly contested theories out there is, uh, is it Tyrion? Tyrion, Tyrion. Is a, Tyrion is actually not, or not actually a Lancaster, but Lannister. a secret Lannister. He's but a totally secret, season one right now. I know, I, the pronunciations <laughs> are not it. And he's actually um, Targaryen, and that'll put him on the throne. Targaryen. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. So the big we question, of course, is how will it end? Yes. He was like, Dracaras and. So here's my theory for how it's going to end. Daenerys is obviously a mad queen, okay? So she's got to go. Sorry. Oh, I totally went rogue. No, I know, I know. I got a taste for that fire and blood and I just ran with it. Yeah. Gendry's gonna win the Game of Thrones and that Arya's gonna kill Daenerys. Sansa and Tyrion are going to win the Game of Thrones. It feels like they're trying to make Jon Snow the king. I hope Tyrion lives. He is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> I hope he, he ends up being Hand. I think Sansa's gonna end up being the Warden of the North. Arya's gonna be like and like kill her. Daenerys gonna die. And then Gendry is going to be appointed to the kingship because he's a Baratheon. Mark my words, whoa. <laughs> and guess who sits on the throne? Sansa. This whole thing is way too complicated, whatever she said. Cersei didn't die with Jaime. I think Jaime died. And I think Cersei is gonna come through the bubble and she's going to rule them all. Oh. She's dead. Westeros is just gonna be all female power. I think it'll be Sansa. I think it'll be Daenerys on the opposite side, kind of like Cersei was. Again, two. Let's see, who can we go bother? Let's, let's go bother the defenders. Okay. Would you like to try on the crown? Yes, yes, I would. Psych. Oh. I'm gonna take it anyway. Dracarys. So of course there are so many theories, everybody has an opinion, and we want to know what you think. Who do you think is going to ascend to the Iron Throne? Share your comments on social media, tag us at, at SALiveKSAT, and we'll try to share some of them a little bit later on in the show. But first, I have one question. What is that? Where are my dragons? Ha, ah, funny you should ask, my dear, because one of them is getting ready to hatch right now. Winter has come, and ice sculptor Burr Buddy Rasmussen is here, bringing our ice dragon to life. How are you, sir? It's good oh, to see hi, you. Mike. How are you, sir? Good. So this is the dragon. Oh, wow. So cool looking there. Thank yes. you. 
So you're going to be making a dragon. Perhaps a dragon, maybe a attacking a castle, maybe. Oh, it's okay. And then it's going to be kind of shooting fire out I think of. We're going to try and do fire, yeah, down into the castle, and then maybe uh, we'll turn it into a whiskey luge. Okay. So about how long does it take to make a, a an ice sculpture like this? Usually about an hour. It depends on the difficulty level. Okay. Depending on what it is, of course. Yeah, yeah design, yeah. how much work goes into it. And okay. some, of the, some of the common ones people usually see in San Antonio are what? Alamos, cactus, cowboy boots, guitars, <laughs> Texas. The usual. Yeah, the usual the, Texas usual stuff. stuff. The uh, usual. We understand you're about to compete in the World Ice Art Championship. We just came back from it. Just okay. came back. Yeah, we got second. We took second. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very That's much. fantastic. Thank you. Well, we are going to let you get back to work. We're going to okay. keep checking in throughout the show as we have the dragons being born. Let's see what happens. Because there's another one ready to hatch here. <laughs> I mean, thank you very much. We appreciate thank that. You, All right. Well, they are the protectors of the wall, the watchers uh, of the realm, and they are the men of Brander Combat Academy here in San Antonio. And we have Jorge Aliaga and Martin Younger are here to teach David Elder. <laughs> He's the lucky one today. He is our hound. He's going to train training 101. So, all right, what is the first thing you pass off the weapon to the young hound there? There we go. Okay. What is the first thing he needs to know except making sure not to grab the pointy end. Okay, so it's a two-handed sword. You're gonna use two hands. If you're right-handed, you wanna have the, uh, your strong hand closer to the, uh, the grip there, to the top of the grip. Now I'm gonna go through some quick uh, positions. Okay. And postures well, with the, the guard. Hound might be pretty good at uh, this. My partner, Martin, will demonstrate <laughs> first. So we've got uh, our first position is the tog of the high guard, holding the sword high over your head, threatening with a cut downwards. From there, we have a thrusting position, the ox. It's also high. But now this is more a stabby type position. Stick him with the pointy end. Speaking of stabby, have you ever gotten hurt doing this? A little bit. I mean, it's like any other martial arts. You get some bumps and bruises in there. But, but uh, rub we, some dirt on it and you're fine, right? <laughs> we, we, and we wear uh, some good protective equipment. So. Oh, really? We all have day jobs, so we, okay. we don't want to get hurt too bad. And these were actually training swords back in what era? Uh, so we're talking late medieval, early renaissance, something like 13th to 16th century. Okay. okay. David, do you think you could take him on? Okay. Oh, I think the hound. I think the hound could show him a thing or two. Yeah. You, you think so? Okay. I, or should we have the expert show us how it's I done? I think we should have the yeah. experts. All right. All right. Hop in there. Yeah. Thank you, you buddy. You pull the plastic sword out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, take it away. All right. I can see why they might get hurt sometimes. Yes. <laughs> That's Thank you fantastic. So much. Well, Thank again, you. If you want to train with the Brander Combat Academy, they practice weekends at McAllister Park from 4 to 6.30, weather permitting. For more information on them, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Well, we know you are the mother of the queens, but the true mother queen. Of mother of dragons. Mother of dragons. <laughs> mother of queens. Queen mother, something like that. The tra I'm only episode five, okay? <laughs> but the true queen, Amelia Clark herself, was in the Lone Star State uh, just uh, last week, and she was over in Houston at our sister station, KPRC. You'll see clips of her throughout our show of Thrones, but first, hear what she said about her friendship with co-star Natalie Emmanuel and the difficult loss of her on-screen companion. But if you aren't caught up, remember again, there are spoilers ahead. Um, so yeah, it's really, you know, there's a lot of time on set, there's a lot of time waiting around for stuff or waiting for a storm to pass or whatever it is. And so you want to be able to have someone that you can be real with and, you know, and giggle with and, and have a good time with. And then it was like, oh my god, it's that one. And then suddenly it was just like, everyone was like, you're right. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> you guys don't know what's about to happen, and I do. Um, and uh, it completely floored me and killed yeah. me all over again. It was so, it was hard enough doing it. And that was your last day. Yeah. It was your actual last day. And me and Jacob were just broken. Yeah. Like Nat left, and we were like, we can't, we can't do this. Well, yeah, and he was trying so hard to make us happy and make us giggle, and we were a bit just like, wasn't can't. he doing like silly voices or something? No, he was. <laughs> he was like, not even, a, not even a, the glint of a smile. We just couldn't do. It was too sad. I love him. I love Amelia Clark. We're going to hear more from the mother of dragons herself, Amelia Clark, and her trusted on and off screen friend, Natalie Emanuel, throughout the show. Still ahead on SA Live's Show of Thrones.
If the Iron Bank isn't funding your finale watch party, that's okay. We have decoration and stack ideas that are easy on the wallet. And next, magic is alive and well in Market Square. Our friendly trickster Scott Pepper is here to wow you with sorcery straight from the Seven Kingdoms. We also want to give a shout out to Gibson Costume Shop for providing our outfits for our show of thrones. They've been around for nearly 100 years and are hoping you can help keep them open for another 100. Stay with us. <laughs> ah, this coffee is hot. When's winter coming? I got you covered. Thank you. Hey, hey, just don't leave that cup laying around anywhere. I mean, you'll never hear the end of it. Well, we're outside out here, and yes, we have the costume contest going on, and we have a little dire wolf out here. <laughs> oh, I'll just move it up just real quick. <gasps> You got the little ghost now. There you go. And of course, Jon Snow. What's your name? Hi, Crystal. Crystal. Now, uh, do you watch the show? Yes. You read the books? Yes. Are you a big fan? I'm a, I'm a Song of Ice and Fire fan first, then Game of Thrones. Oh, there you go. So book first and then the show. There you go. And of course, our very own Spurs Lady. Some of you are out here. And you have, I love it. You have the Iron Throne on your head. You. Now, how did you, now you got this all dressed up and ready to go. Now, you watch the show? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, you like the show? Oh, okay. <laughs> We love the show, of course. Well, we have a lot more costume characters coming out here throughout the day, and we'll be checking in with them to pick a winner, but we're going to toss it in to Mike and Fiona in there. You guys are doing some magic in there. What you got going on? Well, he has crossed the narrow sea and brought magic to our shores. I feel like I speak in an English accent because they all do, so brought magic to our shores. We're talking about Scott Pepper from the Magician's Theater. <laughs> yes, like he's it? here to stun us with some sorcery. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. I sound just like you I've today. I've been working on my Game of Thrones accent as well, can you tell? <laughs> anyway, what do we got going on what here? We got? Well, so to avoid any spoilers here, we're going to create our own little Game of Thrones universe right All here, right. okay? So I've picked a few of the characters from the show. We're going to go through these in just a minute. Okay. But let's just assume for the minute that all of these characters are alive, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, Sir you know Davos. These ones? Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. Uh, of course, Daenerys Targaryen, yes. Samwell, Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie, uh, Cersei, sorry, there. Jamie Lannister. Good mm -hmm. job. And Jon Snow. Okay, and? Oh, and Sansa, of course. And we got one more. Oh, we got one more. Wait, I can't see who that is. Oh, Tormund. Tormund. Okay, okay, cool. Tormund. Now, what we're going to do, we're just going to kind of mix these up. Uh, can you do the same thing for me, uh, Fiona? Mm -hmm. Just give them a quick mix-up. Okay. And then uh, just deal them one at a time onto the table. Here, one, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just put them all around the right way here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game with these. In a minute, uh, we're going to choose which ones live and which ones die. Okay, okay. so we get to this decide. This is intense. Okay. I know, so first of all, I'm going to pick two. For example, I'm going to pick these two. Um, you get to pick which one lives, which one dies. So which one dies? That one. This one here, so we place it over there. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> now, uh, tell me again, you pick two this time? Uh-huh. Me? Um, yep. oh, go, oh, ahead. So go ahead, Fiona. Yeah. These two, uh, I say this one dies. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to pick these two. Which one lives, which one dies? That one dies? Okay. I'm going to pick these two. What do you think? Mike? Uh, that one dies. That one dies. Okay. Uh, so back to me. Uh, no, yeah. so Fiona. So you'll go now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These two. Uh, this one dies. Um, I don't know. These two. That one dies. Okay. Three more. Mike, pick okay. two. Those two. Uh, this one dies. And then with these two, let's uh, just kill that one off. Let's okay. with one here. Okay. Okay. One left. And uh, we've killed a whole bunch of those characters. Not sure which ones they are. We're left with one character. Should we see who survived yes. okay. Game of Thrones? It was the Starbucks <laughs> cup. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Crazy. All right, all right, wait. Wait, let's peel off oh the Starbucks gosh. cup. Oh, my God. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Don't worry. Let's peel it off. Let's see who's there underneath. Oh, wow. Oh. Who is it? It's Daenerys, but Daenerys. this is our own little universe, so who knows? But this scroll has been here the whole time. Fiona, would you open that up and read out what it says on the scroll? Okay. It says, uh, after eight people perish, there will be but just one who remains. The survivor will be the dragon queen Daenerys Targaryen. And it was. Okay. How did you do that? However, she is not amused by this massacre. She has decreed that they that the one they call Mike shall be punished 
Using a sword made of Valerian steel. Oh, no. Uh, I guess that's you, Mike. So uh, stay yourself here. We have to uh, punish you thanks to... Um, would you um, just take... This is uh, yeah. dragon's blood and juice. Drink it? This is, yeah, drink it. Okay. This is going to help you not feel we have, anything. We have to okay? go quickly. Yeah, okay. Okay. we've got about 30 seconds. Mm. All right, place this round. Will you help me there, Fiona? Uh, gladly. <laughs> Tell me when you've got that logged in. All right, you shouldn't feel anything. Can you feel anything? Yeah. You do? Oh, Hang my on. gosh. Do you feel yeah. anything? You do? <laughs> I mean, it should kick in just about... <laughs> now... There we go. All right. Oh my um, god. Are you good? I think. Hang on. Let's take it out. Let's let him out. Make sure he's I've, okay. I've cut myself shaving before, but this is ridiculous. So. <laughs> are you good? I think. And the dragon's blood works. <laughs> Thank Good you so you, much. Buddy. Thank you. That's oh, great. For more information on Scott Pepper <laughs> and the Magician's Agency, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Okay, that thing was really sharp. Are okay? Okay. I think so. Still ahead on the SA Live Show of Thrones. If you're going to need a drink after the last episode, you're in luck. We're mixing up cocktails from beyond the wall. And next... Party like a Lannister on a commoner budget. We're making do-it-yourself decoration and snacks for your finale party. It's coming up right after the break. Ten years is a significant chunk of life to yeah. live with one character. And I really feel like that beginning, middle, and then when the season is finally done, th that, that's, that's a lot. It's so I would, that's, a, that's probably a no. Welcome back to SA Live great. Show of Thrones. Look at that out there. That ice sculpture is coming together. It's going to be a dragon, possibly destroying a castle. Yes, and it may be breathing wine fire. Kind of like he's supposed to have wine coming, I think. <laughs> so. All right. Me. Well, you don't need to be the wealthiest house in Westeros to put on the ultimate finale party. Lifestyle and craft expert Adina Anderson is here to show us how some do-it-yourself decorations and snacks as well. Oh, here, sorry. Set we, those over there. So. Yeah, these aren't supposed to be here. I forgot. <laughs> We're supposed to hide those. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Her idea, by the way. Yes. All, All right, what Everybody that knows me knows I love coffee. So, you know, I would have had it there, too. <laughs> so this is fun and easy stuff. This little chandelier you can make for free, really, if you already have the items. It's toilet paper rolls. It's some black paint that I got from Americana. Uh -huh. It's just acrylic paint. And it's some tissue paper and some cardboard from an old box. That's it. That's it's fantastic. so easy. You have everything there, Mike, to put it together. Okay. And now the only thing is if you want it to light up, you just get the tea lights at the craft store. They're really inexpensive the, as well. Yeah, these so little, little things ones, are, yeah. are fantastic. Yeah, and of course they won't catch the, the paper on fire. So. Okay. <laughs> so I just uh, hot glue so gun and a couple of these things across here? Yeah, so you paint the little toilet paper rolls there. Okay. And then that's just to make your chain. You have you actually have a stapler here. Make oh, it simple. Not even hot no glue No sense to burn the okay. fingers, right? Okay. And then you just build your chain. And I did, I think it's eight loops on each side. And all of this is on my website, all the instructions for everything. Thing we're doing and while he's doing that uh -huh. you're gonna make the dragon eggs okay yes and so what you do you're gonna want to put gloves on big tip put gloves on my fingers are still blue well <laughs> and you know eat a, eat a chocolate cupcake <laughs> okay <laughs> but you're gonna get a kind of cool little texture here like this which I have over here on these but all you do is hard boiled your eggs mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me allergy still Ugh. bless you and then you just crack your egg a couple times and you want to keep it like that and then you take your food coloring, and you can use the gel. Look, now I just got the necklace in the frosty. <laughs> <laughs> that frosting is all over the place. I know, yeah. as it should be. And then I use blue. You can use green, whatever you want. And you're just going to kind of start squeezing it in the little cracks. Okay. And then you put it in the fridge overnight, let it set, and you end up with these really cool eggs over here. Let me see if I can oh, look at move it my cake. Yeah. Oh, wow. See, and then you get like this really cool look to your eggs. Oh, like neat. that, and then you could even use the shells, yeah, for something afterwards. Look at that! How Very cool. cool! Okay, <laughs> excuse me. And then we have to have mugs, right? Because they have mugs, you know, during their dinner and everything. And these are just some ball canning jars I had hanging around, and um, this is just the acrylic paint. We have the three colors there, and you're just going to put on your black first, and then you kind of dip it in your brown and your tan, and you just kind of keep going over it. Because you want to have a yummy cocktail, right? Oh, yes. Ooh, yes. yes. And so I have the Valer Mugula. I, <laughs> I cannot say that word. But apparently it's an assassin spirit. And ah. so I put froze, frozen blueberries in our mug here. Mm -hmm. 
How, how is your little chandelier going over there, Mike? Not bad. I mean, look, in just that uh, <laughs> couple of minutes, that's how simple it is. Exactly. And you just hot glue the uh, toilet paper tubes easy. on there and a little bit of tissue paper. That's so about fantastic. an ounce and a half. Idea. Now, this is a spiked vodka. Um, it's from Artisan's Distillery here. In, you guys have had Artisan them on before. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. awesome place. And so I put about an ounce and a half of that, about an ounce of the blue Kakura. See, I'm really bad with words because I know I'm not saying that correctly. <laughs> Okay. A little bit of that, some lime and some club soda, and with the frozen blueberries. And you can add ice if you want to, but you don't have to. We are going to be drinking that yep. in the yes. break here. For more information on Adina's Crafts, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Great ideas as always, Thank Adina. You. Thank you so much. Next on SA Live's Show of Thrones, it's a meal fit for a queen or a Khaleesi. The house of HEB is whipping up one of their Game of Thrones themed dishes. If you are just tuning in, breaking news, winter is coming. There is a cold front marching down from north of the wall. Get ready. I'm really, I'm really into Arya. I just think she's such a <laughs> Sansa, Sophie Turner is just, this season she just kills it. She just she absolutely. Does. Just slowly but surely, you're like, oh no, you are a rock. You are not, nothing's getting past this girl. Right. Welcome back to the Show of Thrones, and we have a question. What do dragons eat? Whatever they want. But if you need some ideas... One of the lesser-known Targaryens, Jimbo Targaryen, from the Eighth Realm of H-E-B, is H-E-B, that's here. right. I'm here. Yeah, Jimbo Targaryen. So my favorite character in the show was Jimbo Targaryen. You know, you don't, they don't talk about him a lot, but he was the yeah, they don't. all the Targaryens. <laughs> so I, I just, I want to pay homage to that. He was, he's a cool guy. <laughs> With maybe cool hair. Reason, maybe food poisoning was the reason why there was a Mad King in the first place. No idea. <laughs> so, Targaryen, what are we feasting on today? So, in honor of the Game of Thrones, we're going to do, we did a bunch of really fun uh, Game of Thrones recipes. This is the Mother of Dragon Fruit Salad in honor of ah. first Daenerys Targaryen. So, we're going to do a little Mother of Dragon Fruit Salad. So, it's tropical okay. fruit season. So, anytime you walk into an HB, you can find some fun tropical fruit. This is a dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how to cut it up, but it's a little like... That sword that you have. Is yes. Valerian steel? Uh, I think close. you're making the Night King nervous. It's, I'm making you nervous. With this. It's not Valerian, and it's not Dragon Glass. You're safe. This okay. is a this okay. is a just just a Targaryen steel blade from, ah, okay. from the kitchen, though the galley kitchen, not the good kitchen. <laughs> so when you cut a dragon fruit open, it's really they're actually really really tender. You just cut it open. It's full of seeds. Mm -hmm. There's two different kinds. We actually have ones that are pink inside that are a little sweeter. I feel like dragon fruit is one of those good support players. So we have like obviously in the salad, there's not a lot going into it. We have dragon fruit cut up. We have blueberries. We have some strawberries. Fresh mint, we're gonna make a dressing out of our roasted walnut oil, mm -hmm. a little lime juice, a little honey, just to kind of bring it all together. Because if you taste it, like it tastes kind of like a like unsweet kiwi, right? It's kind yeah, of like yeah. a, just a little, so it plays a great thing. It's got good in smoothies. But if I was gonna take this out, all I would do is just take a spoon and you just scoop it out. Now, is there any way to Aww. tell how ripe a dragon that is, fruit is? Yeah. So, how can you tell? I kind of go by feel. If they're a little bit soft, there's no, I mean, okay. it's, it's just, they all have the, like the, the pink like ones, which are a little bit different color. The, the inside pink flesh are definitely sweeter than these are, right. which is the other ones. I can't remember the name. There's so like kind of like an avocado, you just, it's that, that feel yeah, to it? Yeah, just kind of, I okay. always look for a heavier for the size too. Heavy for size is usually good. Usually that means there's a little more sugar in it. Um, but you just, I just scoop it out and you can dice it up however you want to dice it. And it's just, it just comes out like that. You can use it as a bowl. You can scoop this out, serve stuff in it if you want to. Cool. A little fun serving dish. We're just going to actually add, you guys can add as much fruit as you want. I brought as much as you wanted to, so you're going to kind of add it. Okay. We're going to show you how quick and easy it is to build a salad. Okay. So. I'm gonna have you, uh, because I don't have all my tools here from the Targaryen kitchen, we have, uh, we have some beautiful plastic forks. Yes. You can actually take some mint, oh. one of you can just take some mint. We're just gonna kind of- Did you bring this from the house of H-E-B? I did, they're the house of H-E-B, <laughs> they're the really nice ones. We're just gonna throw some torn mint in there, and I'm gonna add some honey to some lime juice, just to sweeten up just a touch. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a little edge, and if, uh, Khaleesi, if I can call you Khaleesi. Of you'll course wig, you can. If you'll uh, yes. wig, no, and, not wig, I'm wearing a wig. And right. You'll want to whisk this. You can just whisk it with the, with the fork. With the and these, and I'm going to slowly add a little bit of water. Targaryen oil. recipes can be found. On HEB.com. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. Just to roast okay. the water oil is going to add a little bit of nuttiness to it. You kind of want a little bit more acid than, uh, than actual, the actual oil. Okay. And you just dump it in there. And with, oh. your, uh, with your Night King okay. little fork and here, you just, just, kinda just give it a there. toss. And literally, you can let it marinate for a little while, or you can serve it immediately, however you want to do it. Really simple, good with yogurt, good on ice cream. All yeah. right. Yes. Great so for stuff. More, for more of these Targaryen recipes, that's right. go to the Eighth Realm, which is 
HGB. HGB. <laughs> and I'm only on my fifth episode, and I'm getting all the names down here. Jimbo, thank you. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. Oh, that's really good. Still ahead in the Seven Kingdoms, Stark protectors need a little help from you. The Texas Husky Rescue is here with an important message about some local dire. And up next, Still Golden is here with Game of Thrones themed cocktails. We'll have them on the rocks because winter is here. Keep it here on SA Live Show of Thrones. Hey, welcome to KSAP. What's your name? I'm Arya Stark of Winterfell. Awesome, let's go, come on. Hey, Mario, this is Arya. Hey, Arya, how you doing? He's on my list. Hey, Dylan, this is Arya. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's go. He's on my list too. Thank you so much for stopping by Case at Aria. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for showing me around. And don't worry, you're not on my list. Okay, bye. She's definitely on the fashion no no list. It's like for each minute of dragon riding, or even 30 seconds of dragon riding, that's a week of filming. A week? It's mental. So I those little behind the scenes tips that are fantastic. All right, we drink, we know things, and we're about to get a lot smarter. <laughs> Bartender Jordan Pena from Still Golden is here to make us some Game of Thrones themed cocktails. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we have three Cocktails, grogs. We start things. with the house martel. All as you righty. shall shake up and double strain and we into got the coop. Waterloo gin. So two ounces of this here. Fill it up to that top. We don't want to make anyone not thirsty. <laughs> All right. And a little bit of lime juice. Yes. Right. And that's coconut or oh, shot. Okay. Which is what? Just it's, coconut juice? It's a coconut, like a, a sweetened coconut um, flakes that have been put into a bag and kind of like taking out the juices and syrup, turn into a syrup. So. Oh, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and that last one. And then lime juice. Okay. A little bit of lime <laughs> juice. That we freshly in. squeeze. So is that drink light? So or yeah, is it's, it got it's nice and light. It definitely has a hit because you have two ounces of beans in that. Are the shakers Valerian steel? It's whatever you want it to be today. <laughs> <laughs> and you double strain this to get all the Absolutely. little uh, bits of coconut Absolutely. out of there. So. Which is you put one of those there, there one of those go. there, and go like that. That kind of matches your suit as well. I know that does. <laughs> it's pretty I like beautiful. That. That's a good idea. All right. And, and now to garnish. That and. Dehydrated lime wheel. Ha ha. Next up, we're going to have the three eyed raven. Okay. So we're going to be so. using. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you can do the half ounce first, which is a half ounce mm -hmm. of. It's a peach. Of peach. What okay. Or? You like that one, Fiona. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then we've the, got. Then we're going to do three quarter ounce lemon, three quarter, quarter ounce. ounce the cocktail juice of tea. There, let me take there we that go. off for you. There Thank you go. You. Perfect. And then, and then two uh, one and a half ounces of the bourbon. Woo! Oh yeah. Bam! Oh, you're gonna feel that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good stuff there. Okay. And you sort of slap it on there. That'll show you two. which kingdom you're from. Boom. Shake it. Shake it up. Give it a and then I'm going to start on the Night King while y'all are going over here. So do you have a, uh, a theory as to what's going to happen at the end? I don't. I'm here for y'all to show me, actually, or give me y'all's prognosis, because I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> you need some help over there? There you I, go. The Night King might need some assistance. Yeah, slap me down. <laughs> And we're going to go ahead. Okay, the line is, I loosened it for, but yeah, whatever. Have so. rocks in this glass. There's always a trick to that, so. <laughs> but we'll just do this for now, since we're short on time. Those Garnish. things always get stuck in there. There right. we go. The Night King. All right. And then the yeah, last. Kind of oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. So this last one is called the Night King. The, yes. This is going to have mm -hmm. a blend and then uh, mango syrup, lemon juice. We're going to shake that up as well. And then we're going to put it in a cup. Do you mind putting some ice in there for me? It's right behind you. Here we go. I got it. And that's what you say. Hey, winter has come to this big cooler back here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just pour. Oh, you know what I forgot? A night blend. <laughs> it's all right. Sometimes you just got to forget things, too. Put it Top it off together. with a little bit of that. So. Yeah, why not? All right. And that is. Fantastic that's all supposed to be shaken. 
for the final episode yes, on Sunday evening. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, Jordan. Appreciate that. And for more Absolutely. information on Still Golden, you can go to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank you. You're welcome. Next on SA Live's Show of Thrones, well, who doesn't want a giant wolf dog protecting them? We have dire wolves, or as they are known in these parts, huskies. And they're right here in Market Square. They actually come with a very important and serious message about what the popularity of Game of Thrones is doing to Huskies around the world. Stay with us. Coming up tonight on the Night Beat, the oh, very oh, latest sorry, on the... Sorry, sorry about that, but mayor. you're doing a great job. Big fan, big fan. The very latest on the mayor's race. Child. Yeah, I do have a dog child. Yeah, a dog child. child. A dog child. child. It's not a wirehead fox terrier. Oh, she's just the best dog in the world. The yes. best dog in the world. She is. I love it. <laughs> they are the silent and loyal companions to each one of the Stark children. The dire wolves in Game of Thrones are immensely popular, but that popularity has caused serious problems for huskies around the world. Stefano from the Texas Husky Rescue is here to tell us exactly what's happening but first of all introduce us to these guys because this guy i have right now is a leaner and he's about to knock me over <laughs> yeah, little buddy, Who do we yes. have? tell us a little bit about him that is uno although today he's more known as ghost being yeah. here on the show he's a new arrival with rescue so we're still getting to know this big beautiful boy who thinks he is a lap dog mm -hmm. you do as don't mike you? is very much discovering Sweet though, aren't you, Next, puppy? we have little Valder, or not so little, at 67 <laughs> pounds, the little black and white one here. He is a 15-month-old puppy. He came to us 11 months ago with uh, epilepsy, a seizure disorder that we've had to get under control. Happy to say that we have, and while we booked him coming on the show as an available adoptee, in the last two days, his adoption has become final, and oh, he will be fantastic. leaving the program tomorrow. Oh, that's always Yay. such great news to hear. And does he, does he really have an obsession with Cheerios? He does. He loves Honey Nut Hi. Cheerios. They are golden <laughs> little nugget prizes. He eats half. He hides the other half around the furniture. Aww. <laughs> and last but not least. And this is Bellin. When Texas Husky first made a permanent presence here in San Antonio eight years ago, Bellin was the first dog that we saved. The severe cruelty seizure, Bellin was beaten and starved. Oh. And he's kind of become the local poster boy of our work. He has since gone on to become a pet partner therapy dog with the Therapy Animals of San Antonio and works with children in crisis all around the city. So dogs become popular in shows like Game of Thrones, but these are not just your ordinary, everyday ordinary dogs, right? They're not. I mean, they are, you oh, know, God. in the working breeds, they are high energy. They need lots of interaction, both mental and physical. And if people see them on TV, they fall in love with them with their obviously great looks. And they may not be ready for that type of dog. People need to do more breed research to make sure you are matching yourself with your dog. That and, it would be a compatible fit. And yeah. with their coats, though, I mean, they're made for winter. Does that... Are they overheated down here? No, not really. The double coats act like insulation in a house. They help keep them cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It's just, you know, no dog needs to be outside in a yard in San Antonio August. Of course. So, so all these guys do love their air conditioning. If people want more information about Texas Husky Rescue? Oh, please visit our website at www.texashuskyrescue.org or on Facebook at Texas Husky Rescue. Okay, well, thank you very much. And you guys, yes, I'm glad you found a home, buddy. Good for you, so, all we'll, right. We'll be back with more of SA Live's Show of Thrones after this. Welcome wow. back to our Show of Thrones. There it is, there's the ice sculpture person working on. Oh my gosh, that is just amazing. He did that in an hour's time. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, this is gorgeous out here. It is. We're going to uh, get more on that in a second. But we got to thank uh, our folks that came out dressed up for our show of thrones out here. Once again, Gibson costume for our wonderful costumes that we have been wearing. So our contestants today have been Sovia, dressed up with the Iron Throne up there. And oh, goodness gracious. Yes. And, and, and what, is, what is the little name here? Christopher. Christopher. Oh, Christopher, oh, Christopher I think, but you're so precious. I think somebody needs a nap right there. Oh, <laughs> goodness gracious. But I will tell you what, and we have the Game of Thrones with the crown on there. <laughs> think, though, we've got two winners right here. You each get one of these beautiful cakes 
from uh, Dario over there at Romelia's Bakery and tickets to the missions as well. So the missions game, there you go. And of course, we want to thank the missions and Dario at Romelia's Bakery and La Familia Cortez for providing the prizes. Yes, indeed. And of course, all of our wonderful sponsors right there. Hey, let's go outside to David real quickly and check on that dragon, that ice sculpture. Check this out, you guys. Now, it is just about to be finished out here. Uh, look, at, I got my, my beer right here as well. And they're completing this whole sculpture. It is absolutely gorgeous. You do fantastic work. Second place in the World Championship out there in Alaska just recently. And uh, you're about to wrap it up. But thank you so much for coming out here. You did a fantastic job on this dragon. Is thank this your you. first dragon? Uh, yeah, first time. Oh, nice. Well, you did a great job. That's a really nice dragon. We'll send it back into Mike and Fiona, you guys. I'm going to continue drinking this. <laughs> Just amazing the work that he can do. Hope you all enjoy the last episode. Yeah, it's I know where you're going to be Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yes, you. You just need to just keep watching. You're still on episode five, season one. Seven more shows. Keep going. To watch. Yes. Something like yes. that. <laughs> great weekend, everybody.